other fairies fly, then why don't you? I had wings once. They were strong, but they were stolen from me. There is evil in this world. Oh, what the fuck kind of hat is that? This is my African prince hat. <laughs> okay, shit. You got a bean pie over there too? <laughs> and a pork chop and sandwich. A, and a pork chop sandwich. <laughs> And a white woman. <laughs> I was about to say, you can't be wearing that cowboy shit while we're trying to do this, no. this uh, uh, male feces movie or whatever it is. Everybody, Disney has a new movie out. Big movie. Big movie. It's, it's, one of the, it's one of the big highlights of the summer. Yeah. Getting it out the gate quick. Maleficent. And I can't wait. Ma- Ma- Maleficent. Maleficent. Okay. You know what? Couldn't they have picked another villain? Couldn't they have done a movie called Wicked Stepmother? <laughs> A evil queen, man. That's 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 so prevalent. She was the the most well designed of all those wicked stepmother type characters. You know what? That is true. This is based off of Sleeping Beauty, right? And Sleeping Beauty is one of my favorite Disney movies. You know, it's funny because as the Disney animated movies go, it's probably my least favorite, except visually. It's at the top of my list. One of the movies that I studied when I was a kid, yeah, trying to learn yeah. how to draw, like, like the the art on it. Like I bought it because I was just like I just love this art. I hadn't seen it until I was like older. Oh yeah, but I was like, man, I have to own this because it's so beautiful. But then to watch it, as far as like the writing, the writing on that is so superficial and formulaic, and it's just kind of like get in, get out. You don't get to know those characters really at all. Even it's, Di- it's, even it's, even Disney looked at that own movie and said, "Damn, this shit ain't got no character in it. <laughs> yeah, we got to remake this shit." <laughs> yeah, that's what it seemed like. And it's, it's but go ahead and do your setup. Well, well I'm, I was just going to say, Martin, you know, human beings, man, human beings are shitty people, man. They can be. Human beings, you know, we write all the history books. No, no, these fairies and elves and shit, they don't get a chance to tell their story. That's true. It's true. It's told by the winners. It's told by <laughs> humans write all the books until the Wicked Witch came out. Uh-huh. Had that play Wicked out there. Wicked, she said, yeah. hold on. I'm, y'all got, <laughs> y'all didn't hear my shit. Y'all believe in all that bullshit. You didn't hear my side of the story. She opened up the doors for everybody to do expose right. now. The, the, the Grinch did his. <laughs> he should, oh, yeah, he sure did. The Grinch did his. And, and now Maleficent so, yeah. came out and said, you know what? Like, that's that's a bunch of bullshit. That's a right bunch there. of bullshit. Let me come in here and TMZ this shit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like she said, like, oh, 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 that's how you heard it? You hit a part before that? What set that up? Okay, watch this now. Yeah, yeah. Turns out that Maleficent is actually kind of cool. Yeah. It was Maleficent was actually good to people. People that the humans were the ones that came in and started fucking with her. Right. She she was she was decent. She had a whole land of creatures that loved her. And she thought she finally found love. Charlotte Cop Coppola or whatever. Charlotte Copley. He came in and treated her real nice. And she thought, well, you know what? Maybe I actually even found love instead of hanging out with all these other ugly old creatures in the woods. <laughs> But he had to be he had to be an asshole. Yeah, man. he treated her like the giving tree. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, thing is, it's like yeah, I'm hey, I'm I'm the love of your life. So you got something I need, or yeah. something I want. Oh yeah, yeah. When they were kids, they were cool. Yeah. Then when he grew up, and by the way, his name is Stefan. He's got a punk ass, bitch ass name, True. so you know that he wasn't any good <laughs> to, be, to begin with. But <laughs> he so he came in and. and when he was little, it was cool. He even said, you see that castle over there? I'm going to live in, I'm, that's that shit I'm going to live in one day. And Maleficent said, cool, just come see me sometime. Yeah. That's oh, all I ask. Does my iron ring bother you? What, baby? It's gone. Yeah, it's gone. For you, yeah. It had, you know, had her ass sprung. Messed with the, got into her head. Uh-huh. But then when he grew up, he had ambitions, man. And the king said, king said, listen. For no reason, just say anybody goes over into those woods and just gets that bitch head, get bring her head back to me, and just destroy everything in those fucking woods. You're gonna be king. Yeah. And my man Stefan couldn't he said, "Oh, well, if that's all it takes." Forgot it, just instantly. Forgot all the friendship they had. Mm-hmm. Went in there and said, "You know what? I can't really kill her." I well, mean, well, I, I, first he roofies her. <laughs> yeah, he does. He roofies. You know what? I didn't even think about that. My man date rapes her. But instead of taking vagina, he ended up taking her wings. Yeah. And that was her pride and joy. That's how she ruled on land. Woke up aching and everything. And Charlotte Copley is like, hey, man, Stefan goes back to the king and say, hey, king, look, brought this shit back for you. Now, yeah. Put the crown on me. Keep your word. Yeah. Crown me. Crown me. And after that became just like most people when they, when they get a little money, Uh when they get a little, when they get a little shine, they get a little fame, come, it became a total dickhead. But that's all right, though. My girl Maleficent said, you know what? 
I don't know who y'all fucking with. <laughs> right. Do you do you not see the kind of power these 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 hands have? She say it's on. And if y'all think I'm a fucking villain, then I don't give a shit. <laughs> What a glittering assemblage, King Stefan. Royalty, nobility, the gentry, and... <laughs> How quaint. Even the rabble. I must say... I really felt quite distressed at not receiving an invitation. You're not welcome here. <laughs> oh dear. What an awkward situation. The story here is actually, it is a retelling of this character, this, this Disney villain. And it turns out that her side of the story is, that while she was angry and rightfully so, she was never an evil person. Right. She, she was, was at. She was, you know, she was she was hurt. She was wronged. Yeah, she was scorned. Scorned. Yes, and it turns out that once she realizes the error of her ways, she starts to actually pull back a little bit. And that's what I liked about this character, that they gave her a heart. I mean, the movie does well at, in, in bringing in other characters and giving them more fleshed out characters. The king in this movie. Yeah. Yeah, big asshole, but... There's something about him that has more character than the cartoon did. Oh, absolutely. And Malefic Maleficent herself is definitely more dimensional. However, those are the only two characters in the movie that really have any real personality to me. And the thing that I found heartwarming about the film is that Male Male God damn it, Maleficent, Elle Fanning plays Aurora. Aurora yeah. is the princess from the original movie. Right. And there's a point where her and Maleficent start to bond. Right. Male Maleficent starts to feel, and it's, if you've seen the original movie, she says at a, on her 16th birthday, she's going to prick her finger on a spinning wheel and she's just going to sleep. She's going into a coma. She, she, yeah, she's going to, might as well be, just say she's dead. <laughs> you know, <laughs> unless some old, unless we get a guy who's going to come in here and give her a kiss and then she'll wake up because It'll be true love. But Maleficent is thinking. But, well, true love don't exist, clearly. But, uh, clearly. And then plus she's thinking, well, who's going to fall in love with a bitch that never wakes up? Really? I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, that'll be some of the worst sex you would ever have. In, in this film, she starts to actually see the girl grow. She starts to see the girl as a human being and not as a, a, a just a device of revenge. And she starts to feel responsible for her Because one of the things I didn't like in the movie is that you have the fairies in there. Who need child protective services called on the ass? Really, you didn't like? Because I, I, I like that they added that to it. I, I thought that was because that 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 actually gave a reason for Maleficent to be in her life. Because otherwise, if she was really being well cared for by these fairies, it'd be hard for her to work her way in there. It, you know what? I see what you're saying, and I would agree with that. Except that again, the fairies they don't have any personality except to be. Stupid, bumbling fucking idiots. Now, I like the effect of the fairies. I thought that that was pretty impressive. I like the way they took Emilda Stoughton's big ass head and put on that little fairy body. And Juno Temple, she's a fine little fairy, man. That little fairy body is kind of hot. The blue fairy still kind of freaks me the fuck out. But in every other scene, they're about to kill that poor baby because they're too busy sitting around slapping the shit out of each other doing Three Stooges basic comedy relief. And I just found that kind of annoying and shallow. And from her side of the story, they would look like bumbling idiots. And maybe, you know, in the real version of what happened, there was probably somewhere in between. Okay, so what you're saying is we have her side, his side, and then we need a talking horse or something in here like that. Well, shit, both of them fucked up, man. You know, I, I, I sat back and saw everything. You know, you notice how those stories go. And yeah. also, yeah, you know, most of the dimension is added to Maleficent and uh, the King Stefan. But also, she has her familiar, which whose name I couldn't pronounce, that the, the, the shape shifting crow. Oh, oh, the crow, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that, that character is, is given dimension too. He doesn't have a lot to say, but he adds a lot to yeah, it. Yeah. It, I mean, you know, they, they, the relationship that they have and what she's able, how creative they are with what they do with him. Yeah. And I think the character you're thinking of is it Diaval? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I can never quite Sam, make out. Sam Riley is the actor. 
And that's the thing about the film, man. It's it's beautiful. I mean, money was definitely thrown into yeah, this film. There was film. definitely some money spent on it. And it's it's gorgeous. I mean, honestly, when they just when she's a kid and they show her wings, I was like, man, so much care went into making those wings not just look realistic, but just fabulous. Her they, wings. They are magnificent. This is her wings cost as much as a Michael Bay film. <laughs> right. <laughs> just just the wings. They they say that this is the most expensive film given to a, a first time director. Oh wow. And the guy's obviously a uh, an effects person. I yeah. mean, if you look at his IMDb IMDb page, let me see who the, the the director is right here. It's uh Robert Stromberg. Okay. This guy, you go to his page, it's it's about this long. Movies that he did visual effects for. You get to directing about this tiny yeah. right here. <laughs> you do have a realization like Shit, man, 10 years ago, we couldn't do this. Right. We oh, we barely were cracking into this. 20 years ago, this movie would have cost a billion dollars. Yeah, it's true. It's true. And it's not just it's not just that it's competently done, it's gorgeous, but it also has it has a style. I mean, it it, you know, some of it looks when they're in the fairyland, it reminded me of some of those uh paintings by Maxfield Parrish from yeah. the Art Deco <laughs> period. Um and uh yeah, you know, it was just very cohesive. I th- I thought he did a great job of realizing, you know, the the two worlds or the two lands. Well, the thing is, is that this is a movie that wants to go deeper. It wants to tell you more story. It wants to give you more depth to a story that didn't already have that much depth right. to it to begin with. And I'm and the reason why I don't hold the first movie's shallow story against it is because it's a straightforward fairy tale. Mm-hmm. You got a prince who's supposed to go save a princess. They live happily ever after. They kill the evil. The, the evil chick and that that's all you that's all you were looking for the thing that, that 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 movie had though is that it had some memorable moments it had memorable artwork it had some songs in there that especially that uh you know oh, I, saw you. I, I honestly i hate the songs in that movie well that's because you have no heart mark <laughs> plenty of heart you know I like the songs in other disney movies it's just that one where i'm just i grip my teeth <laughs> well I, mark most of the world Considers that song a classic. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> with your Prince of Boo Boo looking ass over there. <laughs> sorry. You just like Charlotte Co- Copeland in this movie, man. Just, just stuck up. But I, I, I think that when you come to a movie like this, where your whole purpose is to give more depth to a story and to give, to give more depth to these characters, then I, I don't think that it, it succeeded here. I think that outside of, like I said, I, I'm going to just say one character. I'm just going to say outside of Angelina Jolie as Mal- Maleficent that nobody else really had that much going on. You could you could say Charlotte Copley, but really, he's just evil through the whole film. Oh, just a dickhead. I, I don't, I, I would uh, okay, how would you what, what would you say? Because maybe maybe you could say that to his predecessor. But even he even you admit there's a moment where he could just kill her and go on about his business. And he's like, ah, I, I can't I can't just do that. That's set up. They did the setup and the movie that, and the movie does have a lot of setup and a lot of you thinking like when it comes on, okay. I was taking, I was looking at it and rolling my eyes a little bit. It's like this dialogue is corny. Uh, you know, they really are bombarding me with a whole lot of special effects that I don't know if they're doing this to just cover up for a paper thin script, but I'm, I'm impressed with what they're setting up here. But then once they did that setup, it was like, well, gotta finish this shit somehow. <laughs> You know, I mean, it was, and poor Elle Fanning, man, she was the one that had the least to do in this. No, she's besides the prince. Oh, <laughs> he does have the least to do, but he's used effectively and and funny in a funny way because he he doesn't he doesn't fulfill the role you expect. Uh, and Aurora, even even the original, she's the least interesting character in the whole thing. Yeah, yeah well, yeah, but that's what I'm saying here. They want to build up more character. They, they actually want to, want they want to build up more character around Maleficent. I mean, it's it's her story. It's her story, and I looked at it as being told through her lens the whole time and how she would see everybody. I thought it stayed consistent with that. And there's only so much you can do, you can add to it before it gets too far away from where it started. Look, it it didn't work for you. You wanted more. For me, I was like, wow, this it was actually deeper than I expected it to be. I know. I heard you over there giggling and shit. Uh, okay. you, you, you you were having a good time. I heard you laugh too. Uh, you know what? You know what I laughed at in the movie? I laughed at some things. There's some things when people don't really notice in the film. And you uh-huh. laughed with me where there was a scene where there was a, a soldier 
Uh-huh. And one of those thorn vines picked it. It's like there was a soldier who was doing nothing to nobody. Like he was actually about to leave the battle. Uh-huh. <laughs> and one of those what, thorns, what, what those swamp one, one of those, yeah, one of those vines picked him up and just tossed his ass <laughs> across the field like Wolverine. Yeah, it, <laughs> even that dude it, for a brief moment, he looked at his face. He looked like, like the fuck did I do? <laughs> Shit! He said, "I surrendered." <laughs> the fuck, man! Well, Before you hit the you, ground, you showed up. Wrong yeah. place, wrong time, bro. Yeah. What can I say? <laughs> I do like the film. I do. I mean, just from a... There's some movies where you just look at it purely from a visual standpoint. Mm-hmm. And they get it right. Fairy tale movies are the films where they should do that. I, I'm, I'm watching this and I'm just thinking, you know what? I feel like I'm transported to another world. Or else I'm high than yeah. a motherfucker right now. <laughs> but, but nevertheless... Between Angelina Jolie's performance and just being swept up in this land and really being immersed in it, I thought it was enjoyable. I didn't think it was as great as the potential that it offered, but I thought it was decent, man. And Angelina Jolie, a lot of people, they want to, and y'all need to quit lying. I know some people out there, they listen to her because I've heard these people. Uh They say, Angelina Jolie, man. Oh, that British accent is horrible. I hate that British accent. She's one of the few people out there that can do a British accent. Yeah, no, it was good. I, I totally bought her in this. See, I love fucking with people because everybody hears um, what, what they think is an American doing a British accent. The first thing they want to say is, oh, that British accent is terrible. Yeah. I fucked with somebody one time. Idris Elba uh-huh. came on screen and uh-huh. this some after somebody saw him on The Wire uh-huh. and they're like, yeah, Idris Elba in that movie's all right. And I was like, yeah, but that British accent is terrible. And they're like, like I, I know. I know, man. It's, isn't it horrible? <laughs> I'm like, you know he's from London, right? What? Or at least I told me he's from Britain. Yeah. And then and then they when I told him that, they turned British. They said, oh, I say. <laughs> Hogwash and cocky pop. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. And, and so whenever I hear people complain about Angelina Jolie, I say, you know what? Really? One of the few things I liked about Tomb Raider is that she could do a British accent. <laughs> and I, I will give this movie a matinee, man. I, I think it's entertaining. I'll tell you what. The simplicity didn't work for me, but for families and especially for kids out there, children out there, they're going to appreciate this. Well, I, I think it's it's not only... You know, it nails it for its audience, but it's a little higher than what they've had to what they what they what they've had to deal with or come to expect lately. Because I looked at it and I compared it to movies like, say, Jack the Giant Slayer, yeah, and Mirror Mirror, and Cinderella, and the I mean, Snow White and the Huntsman. And I'm like, I like this way better than all those because all of those, even though they might have had a look for a while, there was always so many awkward moments and stumbling blocks. And this didn't this didn't have any of that. I mean. Sure, it could have been more, I guess, but I think, I think it's just enough. I think, like, as far as Elle Fanning, you know, you felt like you didn't get enough development with her, but we got to see that character when she was younger. So there was so much more development with that character getting to that point. I don't know. I, this, this movie for me was a treat and I wasn't expecting that. So I give it a low full price. A low full price. Yeah. Look at that. Got to the child, to, to, to the child in you, Mark. It did. It did. I did. I was like, you know what? This is, this is one like, like I'm not going to go pay to see it again, but when it's on video or something, like I'll watch it happily. That's cool. There's, there's a lot I, I, right. I, I recommend about it. Yeah, you know my mother has a purse like that hat. <laughs> that I couldn't. Yeah. <laughs> you really do look like some shit out of uh, uh, coming uh, to America. Out of coming to America, yeah. <laughs> Prince Jaffe Jaffu. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You should let me be your Arsenio Hall, man. We need to go roam the town, there man. We go. Tell people we like we rich princes. I tell you what, man. I would like one of them overcoats that has a lion pelt on the top. Shit, you in Texas, you'd be passed out in a minute, in a minute on the ground. I look, look like look, look like a lion was eating me. Yeah, <laughs> tell you, man, there was uh, some, some one of the other things I liked about the movie is I liked the makeup on Angelina Jolie. That was great casting. Oh, the her. way it made her face look angular. Yeah, she went in and asked for that Michael Jackson special yeah, right there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, she looked like my mama right uh-huh. now. <laughs> I mean, they got they put that fix the flat nut cheeks right there. <laughs> and another thing, man, don't think that just because I have these these small complaints about the film that I don't like the direction that Disney's going. 
I really do. I I, I want to I want to hear some a, more it's, shit, it's man. It's a more feminist take. It's kind of like like what Frozen did. Yeah, what what Frozen's doing. I like that. I I like this feminist approach that they're taking. Yeah, and I like that. I want to hear some more stories, man. I know from the villains' point of view, uh, yeah. for, from the so-called villains' point See, of view. See, that's the thing, man. And all these Disney movies, you always watched them and said. Why the fuck are they so angry? Uh -huh. <laughs> What's the deal with these people, man? I yeah. was like, Jerry Seinfeld, why are these villains so What's angry? What's the deal with these villains? Yeah. What? I was like, what? because a lot of these movies, uh, Sleeping Beauty. Yeah. It's like, why the fuck is she so mad? Right, right. Because she just shows up at the birth and just says like, yeah, yeah, y'all giving her all this shit. I'm cursing this child. And you're like, why? It's you, like, you went all your, out of your way bitch, to come here. Bitch, you got, you got a kingdom. <laughs> You that's what that's what undoes villains. Uh -huh. You have ultimate power in your hands. But you got to walk up and start shit with this little baby right here. Mm -hmm. Baby ain't done nothing to you. And that is your demise. You hating. <laughs> you fucking hating. <laughs> baby getting all this attention and you just can't you you know a kingdom ain't good enough for you. Right. right. Got to fuck with a fucking infant. <laughs> but now I know the story. And now I understand. Now it makes sense. Now. Now, oh, I get it. That's the thing, man. As much as I love the, the look of, of Sleeping Beauty, I never rewatch it because I just don't like the rest of the movie. But watching this, I was like, I kind of feel like putting that back in and watching it again. I do too. It makes, and they know what they're doing. Uh -huh. Disney know what they're doing. They, they know what they ain't nothing but a commercial because I can, I, I bet you, I bet you in a, in a few months that vault's going to open. Oh, yeah. Back again. You know, well, once in a lifetime until we do it again opportunity. Sleeping Beauty from the vault. This is what I like is that so often these companies, you know, Disney especially, is good on saying like, hey, let's remake this movie. And clearly somebody in the meeting said, why are we going to just remake it when they could just watch the old one? And instead of them blowing that person off, they said they stopped and said, hmm, maybe you got a point. We should change it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Now, when I'm waiting on, I want to find out how much of a bitch Cinderella was, right. and, why, and find out that the, you know, I want to, I want the, the the wicked stepmother to say, look, I gave her everything, right, right, but she, she wasn't even my child, she wasn't even my child, and she was a fucking brat, she was never satisfied. I want to hear Corella Deville. I brought those puppies home. I did everything I could to take care of them. They shitting all over the place. Fucking parents wouldn't let me near without barking and growling at me. Man, okay. <laughs> 101 Dalmatians. That's actually one of my favorites. I, I've rewatched several times. Corella DeVille has no leg to stand on. <laughs> you don't know her story. She probably said, I tried to help those dogs all I could. Those dogs bit me. <laughs> fucking tore my furniture up. And so I decided out of the goodness of my heart to make a coat out of them. <laughs> you don't know if that was true. She probably said, you know what? I was going to sew them all into one coat, but they were still going to be alive. <laughs> I wasn't going to kill them. I was going to be like Lady Gaga. I have a, just wear a coat of live puppies. Just make a, a bunch of human centipede. I mean, dog centipede. Human, the, dog, yeah, the, the dog centipede, <laughs> yes. Just walk on stage wearing a bunch of yapping <laughs> shitting dogs over your coat. I mean, you, you don't know her story. You don't know, Martin. <laughs> I want wait until the truth comes out. She was a drunk, crass socialite. <laughs> wait until you hear a story. Maybe, maybe maybe she was driven to drink. Those puppies drove her to drink. And then when she tried to help those puppies, she became an outcast to everybody. I said, damn, your house smells like dog shit. I'm just trying to take care there, of these puppies. There's, there's no room in there for that. I'm trying, man. I'm trying, Cruella. Cruella, bring your movie out. I'm trying. <laughs> Don't do so much. Hey, man. Hey, Martin. All right. Well, good night, everybody. No, 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 Martin. No, 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 no. Hell no, Martin. We got it. We, we got something else for you right here, Martin. Oh, there's that music. Yeah, there you go, Martin. Martin, we cannot leave yet. Not with more cookies to give away. Oh, more cookies. Is it this bowl or is it this bowl? Anyway, Martin, can't let, can't let these cookies go to waste right here. No, we can't. No, we cannot. Can't wait till the true story comes out between me and you. <laughs> So that they know that you were the real villain. <laughs> right. <laughs> Martin, we got our second want a cookie game. All right. Don't worry, Martin. It's going to be a little less painful than the last game that we played for A Million Ways to Die in the West. <laughs> okay. All right, Martin. Just like our last movie that we reviewed, which we said it had a lot of interesting trivia, so does this film right here. Such as this one right here. Martin, what pop star had an influence on the makeup of Maleficent? Lady Gaga. Will you let me goddamn 
play the fucking tension music first. Oh, sorry. No, it's all right. No, here, fucking take it. There's music right there. Yes. <laughs> okay. You were right, Martin. <laughs> Lady Gaga. I figured either Lady Gaga or Klaus Nomi. If you know, if you ever seen Klaus Nomi, you know it. He was probably the, the real influence. How'd you know this anyway? You read this shit, didn't you? No, I just took a guess. Really, you just took a guess? Yeah. No, he read this shit on. No, no, I took a guess. Here. Y'all don't y'all believe that? <laughs> Trying to act smart and say I just took a look again. No, you didn't. All right, Martin. Well, let, you know what? Let's see how goddamn lucky you are now. <laughs> okay. All right. Second question right here for you, Martin, is how many other Disney films has Angelina Jolie been in before Maleficent? Mm-hmm. Take a, guess that shit. Disney films. Disney films. I didn't stutter. <laughs> I know. Oh, why am I being so aggressive, yeah, man? Like, that's not even necessary. That's I, not even called for. I don't. You know, for some reason, I don't like when you win. <laughs> it makes me feel well, like I didn't do my job. Well, you get to enjoy this because uh, how many <laughs> she's been in before this one? Yeah. Take a guess. Take a wild guess. <laughs> Zero. Oh, <look> at <laughs> Fuck you, man. <laughs> But you are right. I shouldn't even told you that. You know, that's gonna be my answer from the beginning. I'm like, I can't think of anything. I I, did, I was even trying to think of animated films. I was like, uh, I did that to myself. I shouldn't have. <laughs> I, I I shouldn't have pushed you in the right direction. But you know what? Look at this. You got those two cookies. Oh, two hard cookies. You hear making that sound in there? I hear. Not it. those soft batch cookies that you didn't like. Mm. Everybody likes soft batch. Why doesn't Martin like no, soft they batch? Don't. You know? Yeah, they do. Everybody likes those warm, soft cookies, man. Except you. I like warm, soft cookies, but not soft batch cookies. You like hard cookies like like your hard heart. <laughs> sure. Right there. All right, Martin. Uh, our next question right here for you, Martin. Okay. Now, we know that this movie here, Maleficent, is based on the animated classic, Sleeping Beauty. Mm-hmm. Now, in the production of the movie, they actually brought in some people with animation experience to uh-huh. work on this. Martin. Which one of these animation veterans was not oh, involved in the production on. of Maleficent? A. Tim Burton. B. Brad Bird. C. Andrew Stanton. D. Paul Denny. Uh, boy. Uh, Tim Burton. Tim Burton, Martin. So look at your eyes get light up like that. <laughs> You're like, oh, oh, did you get Tim Burton? Oh, did you get it wrong? <laughs> Oh, wrong answer? <laughs> yeah, Martin, I am sorry, Martin. The answer is Paul Andrew Dini. Stanton. Oh, yeah. After after, uh, after John Carter, they were like, no, nah, man, you, you, you're not welcome here no more. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I thought you would have known that. You know after John Carter Mars. Yeah, but I thought maybe after that, like, he's bumming around with nothing else to do. And they're like, all right, come on in. No, no, you know, they said, don't let that motherfucker near a camera. <laughs> Even when he's taking still photos, don't let him touch that shit. Just don't let him on a lot. He's bad luck. Yeah. <laughs> no, Martin. Tim Burton was rumored to be involved with this to direct. So was Brad Bird at one time. And Paul Denny actually did some rewrites on this. Oh, so, yeah. And yeah. Paul Denny, of course, favorite. did some uh, animated stuff like Batman. The animated yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the feature. Yeah, the show. Yeah, yeah the brain, uh, brains behind uh, Batman, the animated series. Yes. Yes, he is, Martin. See, look at you. You should have known that. I'm disappointed in you, Martin. I well, did not take delight in that. Well, I didn't. Okay. I did not. You should have known that. You took delight. Your eyes lit up. <laughs> I got coonish with this. Whoa, I turned to an anime character. Oh, oh, really? <laughs> Tim Burton, did you say? Oh, screw <laughs> you. <laughs> All right, Martin. Take the fucking bowl. There you go. Just take it. Take it. Take everything. Hey, hey I, people should see me eat my, my spoils on. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I was trying to keep this shit too. <laughs> I don't even want these cookies. I just didn't want you to have them. Exactly. Yeah, here All we right, go. Lord, there you go. A giant bowl of sugar. Yeah. <laughs> there he is, people. Martin is oh. a winner. Oh, you don't you don't like those? Really? Come on, man. They're not that bad. Come on. Uh, okay. You know what? Give them to me. I'll eat them. I appreciate them. This shit tastes like it. It's been kept in a fucking swamp. God damn. Uh. <laughs> this shit tastes like glue. It does. God damn. You know what? I just need to stick to chocolate chip. <laughs> Quit trying to get creative with this shit. Just spend an extra buck and get Oreos next time. God damn. Oh, 
Coitus are awful. I'm sorry, Mark. Well, tonight's loser is Martin Thomas. <laughs> I tried, people. I tried. Anyway. You can fuck, man. Shit's still the after. You can't get the aftertaste you can't get out your mouth. Teeth either. God, then you, you know what it tastes like? Vomit. You know how vomit has like a sweet smell to it. Uh-huh. It tastes like somebody picked up some vomit and put them between these cookies right here. Yeah, indeed. Woo. Well, anyway, people, kcoolmans at gmail dot com. That's k c o o l m a n z. If you want to reach me, you can also reach me on Twitter, kcoolman, and you can find me on Facebook. Just type in my name. We are soon to have double toasted email accounts, so look for that. Martin, well, that's gonna be fun. What's that? That's gonna be fun. It is gonna be fun, man. In the meantime, look for me also on Facebook. Visit our groups, The Refugees of Spill and Children of the Toast. And if you'd like to go to Twitter, look for Martin underscore Nofro. Children of the Toast. Boy, I like that. I, uh, the more I hear that, the I know, more right? I like it. Yes, our children <laughs> of the toast. The children of the toast. Yes. What beautiful music they make. <laughs> gather around. Gather around and go away because <laughs> this is the end of our show, everybody. However... You will see us, and you will be able to join us soon. We start streaming. In the meantime, we got to tell you to go, but we will be back. That is our reviews. Or those are our reviews. Those are our games. And now we must say good night. Thank you, everyone. Adu. Avui de se. Avui de ve. Avui de ve. See you later. Bye-bye. Don't be afraid. I am not afraid. Then come out. Then you'll be afraid. <laughs>